Welcome to video number 11. Today's topic is capacitors and inductors in the time domain. Now, what we've got in front of us right now are the fundamental relationships between current and voltage for in capacitors and inductors. Now, for the time being, I'm not going to dwell on the integrals. They're a little too abstract for what I want to explain today. Let's just take a look at these derivatives for a second. This first equation tells us that the current flow into the capacitor is proportional to the rate of change of the voltage across the cap with respect to time. The faster you change this voltage, the more current flows. Similarly, with the inductor, the voltage drop across the inductor is proportional to the rate of change of current flowing through the inductor. So the faster we change the current flow, the bigger the voltage is across the inductor. And the capacitance and the inductance are the scaling factors for these rates of change. Again, don't worry about the integrals right now. They're just for the sake of completeness. And we can talk about that stuff some other time. For now, let's go on and look at what happens when you charge a capacitor. Now here we've got a capacitor in series with the resistor, and right now that circuit is connected to ground, so the cap is discharged and there's no current flow. Now one of the fundamental quantities that we're usually interested in is the RC time constant. If we multiply R times C, we call that tau. That is the time constant. Dimensionally, resistance times capacitance is seconds. So this is dimensionally equal to time. The RC time constant is a fundamental quantity relating to this circuit and how fast current and voltage will change over time. All right, let's assume that we flip this switch instantly from ground to the battery at T equals zero. What's going to happen to the current and voltage? Well, the voltage varies according to this equation. It's an exponential, and it looks like this. We're starting with Vn equals zero because the cap is discharged when we flip the switch. The cap begins to charge through the resistor, and it follows an exponential function that looks like this. What's happening is initially it rises pretty fast, but it begins to taper off as the capacitor voltage approaches the input voltage. And this final value it's approaching, Vn, is called the asymptote, or the asymptotic value that the capacitor voltage approaches. Now, this RC time constant factors in here because we can look at time in terms of tau. After one time constant, we see that the capacitor hits about 0 0.63 times Vn. That is, it reaches about 63% of its final value after one time constant. After about five time constants, it's within 1% of its final value. It's about 99% of the way there. So as a practical matter, you can consider a capacitor to be to be fully charged after about five time constants in a circuit like this. Now, what about the uh, current flow into the capacitor? Well, it's described by an exponential equation as well. And the way to think of the capacitor in this case is when we first flip the switch, the capacitor acts like a short circuit. As time goes on, it starts to behave more and more like an open circuit. So initially, we get the maximum current flow, which is limited by the resistor, and the input voltage applied, which is Vn over R. So what happens is as soon as we flip the switch from ground up to the battery, the current initially jumps all the way up and begins to drop exponentially as time goes on, approaching zero at the asymptote. After one time constant, the capacitor current will be about 0 0.37 times 
its max value, which is Vn over R. So we've got these two uh, waveforms associated with the charging current and the charging voltage. All right, let's see what happens when we discharge the capacitor. That is, it's been connected to the battery for a long time. Now we flip the switch the other way. And here is, whoops, what's happening in that case. All right, we'll again pretend that time starts the instant we flip the switch. And we again have these exponential relationships describing the current and the voltage. So at T equals zero, we flip the switch. The capacitor begins to discharge, forcing current back this direction. So our current is going the opposite way of our uh, sensing arrow. So we're going to have a negative current here. And the voltage will be positive because what we're doing is just decreasing the capacitor voltage over time as it discharges. So here's what we end up with. All right, initially we have V sub zero, which is the initial value, which we'll assume is the same as V in. It's all, all charged up. So V in is the same thing as V sub zero. And we get this exponential discharge right after one time constant tau, which is still tau equals r times c. After one time constant, we're at 0 0.36 times the initial value. After five time constants, the capacitor is essentially discharged. And the capacitor current is going to decay exponentially towards zero as well. Okay, after one time constant, it's approximately 0 0.36 times this max, which is negative VO divided by R, the initial value divided by the resistance. And after five time constants, it's essentially discharged completely. So we've got these exponential curves all over the place with charging and discharging. And this is called the transient behavior of the capacitor or the circuit in general. This exponential stuff goes away eventually, leaving us just the final value here of zero volts or zero milliamps, which are the final steady state values. All right, let's look at an inductor here real quick. Okay, we're going to have basically the same circuit where the inductor and resistor are connected to ground, and at T equals zero, we flip the switch instantly from here to here. Okay, now, inductors behave sort of the opposite way of capacitors. Okay, remember, a capacitor acted like a short circuit when it was discharged and we connected it to the battery. The inductor acts like an open circuit initially, eventually behaving like a short circuit after a long time. So these equations capture that behavior, okay? When we first flip the switch and connect the battery, the inductor voltage is gonna jump up to V in volts then it's going to exponentially decay towards zero. All right, that's because initially the inductor looks like an open circuit. So the applied voltage is dropped across the inductor. Now, as time goes on, the inductor looks more and more like a short circuit. So the voltage drops and that's occurring because as the magnetic field across the inductor builds, its opposition to the flow of current diminishes. In any case, we have a time constant associated with this circuit as well, and that is tau equals L over R. Dimensionally, that has the units of seconds as well. Now, <laughs> we've got what looks like an inverted version in these equations because we're dividing T by tau, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's easier just to express the reciprocal of 
the time constant r over l in these equations. It just makes them nicer to look at. All right, after one time constant, the inductor voltage has dropped to 0 0.36 times V in. After five time constants, the inductor voltage has decayed essentially to zero volts. All right, the current flow through the inductor is going to grow from zero towards an asymptote of V in over R, according to this equation. So after one time constant, it has increased to 0 0.63 times V in over R. And after five time constants, it's essentially fully charged. So, you know, we have a lot of similarity in the waveforms between inductors and capacitors when they're charging and discharging. Okay, let's go on and discharge the inductor. We're almost there. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, now, assuming we've built all the magnetic flux that we're going to around the inductor, it's fully charged. We flip the switch at T equals zero and ground out this node. Now, what's going to happen is, think of it this way. The inductor works such that when we flip it, the switch to ground, the field starts to collapse, and it wants to keep the current flowing in the direction it is now. In order for it to do that, the inductor voltage has to have this polarity. So we're looking at the negative side of the inductor when this magnetic field is collapsing in. So it induces a voltage with this polarity, trying to keep the current flowing clockwise. That results in the inductor voltage behaving like this, following this exponential function, all right? We're assuming that it's been charged up by V in, so we're gonna have negative V in here as our initial value that the inductor jumps to, right? It was at zero, it jumps instantly to this value, then decays away exponentially according to this equation. After one time constant, it's dropped to about 0 0.36 times V in, and it's negative, of course. After five time constants, it's essentially decayed away to zero voltage. That is, the field has essentially collapsed to zero. All right, our inductor current looks like this. Okay, again, it starts out at a value limited only by the resistor and the voltage that built up across the inductor due to the field collapse, which is V in over R. Okay, after one time constant, it's decayed to about 0 0.36 times V in over R. And after five time constants, it's essentially decayed to zero. All the energy has been returned by the magnetic field, so there's no more current flow and no more voltage. All right, now, <laughs> one final point before we finish uh, this video, and that is, <clears throat> I'm assuming that this switch instantaneously goes from here to here. There is no time lag. In a real circuit, we might have a finite amount of time as the switch transits from this contact to this one. And if that happens in the interim time where the contact is, you know, not connected to anything, the field will collapse trying to keep this current flowing, and that can induce a really, really big voltage across the inductor. That's called inductive kick. And sometimes it can, you know, create thousands of volts across this coil and it can cause arcing and you know damage to the switch contacts so you have to be careful when you disconnect a an inductor with a large magnetic field built up around it 
If it has nowhere else to go, it will just induce a really big voltage spike and uh, it can cause some damage. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, when you're dealing with inductors being switched in and out of a circuit. All right, now hopefully this wasn't too confusing and I didn't move too quickly. I'm going to finish it out out with just a summary of all of these waveforms and the charging and discharge configurations of the switches. Okay, you might want to maybe get a screen capture of this or, you know, find it in another reference. But this is as much as I need to say about uh, capacitors and inductors in the time domain for right now. We're going to be moving on into the frequency domain in the next video. And I think that's a little bit more uh, applicable to the applications we're going to be looking at uh, in the future. Uh, so for now, that's all I've got, and uh, I'll see you next time.